Okay. All right. Well, good morning to everybody. Um, I'm Anika Nelson. I'm the Craft Center Manager, and I'm super, super, super excited to be here with you this morning um, to learn how to make fancy mustard from my friend, Christina. Um, I'm so excited to work with Christina. She knows everything about cooking, um, and she's super cool, and she's incredible incredibly active all around town doing amazing things. Um, and we have convinced her to spend some of her precious time with us. Um, and um, we're luring her into uh, teaching um, in our prep kitchen at the craft center. Um, and uh, for those of you who um, weren't, uh, you know, don't know about what the craft center is, I'm sure you all know about the craft center, but we are a new resource on campus. Um, and this is our soft opening. Um, we're going to be having ceramic studios, jewelry, flame worked glass art, um, surfboard shaping, mixed media, and culinary arts headed up by Christina. Um, and, <laughs> um, and we are still essentially kind of under construction. The building is um, almost done and we're gonna be moving in all the amazing equipment. Like I had to look at stoves the other day, Christina, and she helped me out. I was like, which stove is the best? <laughs> so um, we're getting all the equipment moved in and, and we'll keep you posted on developments in that arena. Um, and we're still gonna be offering some virtual <laughs> classes. Um, ways for you guys to learn about us and what we're doing and who our great instructors are. Um, but I'm, and we've got all sorts of ways to get involved eventually. Um, we're not open yet. And um, we probably won't be able to be open full swing until this pandemic is in our rear view mirror. But in the meantime, we're gonna have some virtual dance parties and parties with Christina, <laughs> all sorts of things. Um, and just so you guys know how amazing Christina is, I'm going to embarrass her and I'm gonna read her bio. <laughs> so Christina Eng um, is a San Diego transplant um, by way of San Francisco. Uh, she's a personal chef, uh, which is actually where her, I met her. I met her in a mutual friend's kitchen. Um, and a food educator rooted in supporting local farms and California growers at every meal served. A graduate of the University of California, Davis, in the area of food science, Christina has worked in various arenas of food service industry, including grocery, catering, hospitality, corporate kitchen positions. She draws on all of these experiences to drive her events and classes across San Diego County. And I know that's just the tip of the iceberg, Christina. Um, really, we're so excited to have you and so um, appreciative of your willingness to play along with me and um, and guide us in, in so many different things. So welcome, Christina. With that, um, I'm going to be uh, monitoring the chat. So if those of you who um, have questions, please pop those in the chat, and then I will gently interrupt Christina, because um, she's used to me, <laughs> and ask those questions. And, um, and without further ado, I'm going to be quiet, and I'm going to let Christina take over. Welcome, Christina. Thank you, Annika. Thank you, everyone who's here. Um, I'm going to go out there and say I see on my screen here, do we have the youngest UCSD Craft Center participant on the call today? Because that's amazing. You can never start too early with cooking and good food. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for that lovely introduction. Uh, uh, as you all uh, have heard, uh, my name is Christina. I, I am thrilled to be um, doing a class in reality with the UCSD Craft Center. This has been a long time coming. And um, uh, I we were on a Meet the Artist uh, Zoom call yesterday, if maybe some of you were on that call. Um, and I was saying, I think um, it's a really, as crazy as the times are, um, you know, there's a little bit of rain today where I'm at, you know, a rainy day is not gonna keep us from cooking. A rainy day is not gonna keep us from getting to know the food that we eat a little bit better, getting to know the people behind our food a little bit better. Um, certainly, um, I'm sure uh, everyone on the call has, um, you know, found some silver linings during this period. And um, for me, it really has been this journey of 
paring back and not only in my professional you know work as a personal chef but also just getting information and getting basic knowledge like what we're doing today we're getting a, a condiment you know a condiment that everybody knows that everybody knows hey ketchup and mustard mustard everybody can say they've had it before um but you know what 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 is it like where do we even begin with that and you know i think um in my um uh, my hope is and my plans are you know i love cooking i love the complicated recipes. I love the most pared down recipes, but if we can start with pared down recipes and just learn from the basics, we can work our way up. So that's kind of how we're going to start today, um, a building blocks class, uh, so to speak. So uh, without further ado, all those words, let's actually talk about mustard. So mustard itself, um, let's see if we can, is derived from a seed of the mustard plant. Um, if anybody has a little space right now or just sees weeds around in an organic garden, mustard is probably one of the most just hardy plants. Um, and once you grow it, it just keeps coming back. Now there are multiple varieties of mustard across the board um, that you know we can that we get seed from uh, in order to make mustard the condiment. Uh, oftentimes in Indian cuisine, um, India, um, cuisine derived from India, they use a brown mustard seed. So that's something that's another option. Um, as with all of us, we're all different varieties, all different people, different seeds bring a different spice level. Uh, I'd say I'm a mild spice, so I'm gonna describe myself as a yellow mustard seed. You know you know who I think is a brown spicy zesty mustard seed is my friend Annika. So I, 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 I'd keep her at the brown mustard seed level. Again, um, Having knowledge though of what flavor profiles um, are associated with each variety um, are going to determine how you make your mustard. And of course, mustard across the board is going to be your creation. Maybe you like it spicy and zesty. Um, I am a spice baby. So we're actually going to mellow out the spice with a few other things which uh, derives our fancy uh, title. Um, when we're thinking about Well, and Christina's frozen. This is one of the downsides of um, of the Zoomosphere and what I tell oh, everyone. Oh, here she goes. Oh. It's okay, Christina. You froze for a moment, but you're back. Okay, great. Sorry about that, everyone. Don't um, worry. So uh, if we... Um, if we talk a little bit about, or we just consider the flavors on our palate, it's gonna make our lives a lot easier in terms of making food that we actually like. So uh, maybe um, using mustard as the example, but from a mustard aside, if you will, um, when we're cooking, it's really important to address, you know, all the, all the flavors on our palate when we're cooking and when we're tasting our food, because when you kind of get the, I don't know if anyone has ever seen the movie Ratatouille. There's a scene where he finds this chunk of cheese and then he finds like a piece of fruit or something. So he eats them separately. But when he eats them together, it's this like symphony of fireworks in his, in, in, on his palate and in his mind. And I thought that was, I, I love using that example because all cooking can be that way. And it's got to just hit all the different notes of salty, sweet, bitter. Um, what am I missing? Salty, sweet bitter sour and then um ooh i'm going to i'm going to ask upon my uh my my classmates here uh what is the fifth anyone know what the fifth is the fifth secret uh taste on our palate anyway umami. i'll i'll let the... umami umami yeah i'll <laughs> oh, see we have foodies on here we're no joke so as we're cooking um you know addressing all of those and really finding places for those and all the recipes we make, including the mustard today, are going to be important because that's what's going to make those fireworks go off in our head. So um, I, as I'm speaking, as we're going through the process here, um, I'll, I'll kind of maybe ask upon the crowd, hey, do we have our salty? Do we have our sweet? Do we have our sour? Do we have our bitter? And then maybe you guys can even suggest in the chat ways we can add in that umami flavor. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we talked about mustard seed. This is uh, organic ground mustard, simply just a 
pulverized blended version um, of the seed. Um, if anyone in the crowd, um, well, happy Chinese New Year or happy Lunar New Year, everyone. And everyone. If anyone has been to a dim sum house, maybe Emerald or Jasmine over in the convoy area, um, brown mustard mixed with water is that hot mustard paste that's a very popular condiment in Chinese cuisine. So um, being ground up is going to give us a wider spice um, uh, sensitivity. So when you use a ground product, uh, say, just as any other spice, little bits of pepper or little bits of a strong maybe cinnamon, the tinier it is, the more we're gonna sense it on our palate. So I'd say for those who are really looking for like a less spicy mustard, we go with something along the lines of a whole grain mustard, which is this right here. I made this yesterday. Or, um, and then if you're looking for hotter, um, you go for like a smooth, what we call an emulsified mustard, which we're gonna go through today. So um, from, let's start um, with our roots here. The very roots, um, has anyone ever had mostarda or heard of mostarda? Um, mostarda is a um, Italian based or European based type recipe. And it's really kind of the easiest I'd say, because it's really just going to be a, throw everything in a pot, simmer it down with the mustard seeds. And then we kind of, it's almost like a, a little mustard stew, but um, it is unblended, but it's going to, um, again, having the mustard seed in balance with some of the other ingredients um, is going to bring a really nice uh, balance to our palate. So um, let's start with our saucepan here. And uh, what we're going to do is, um, this is a two, about a two, scant over two ounce um, bottle of mustard seed. I found this in the spice uh, aisle. You can buy it in bulk um, at maybe like a, a Smart and Final or if anyone shopped at um, a local, um, local grocery distributor specialty produce down by the airport. They're lovely. They also have mustard seed there, but this is pretty easy to find um, in the spice aisle. I'm going to go with essentially one ounce uh, into my pot here. And really what we're doing is with the mustarda, we're just going to soften the mustard seeds and kind of marry them with the complementary flavors around them to come up with a condiment that is well balanced. So let's see here. So in a mustarda, um, you're able to use fresh fruit uh, if it's in season. Um, I like the stone fruits or berries. Um, Unfortunately, stone fruit and berries are not a big winter uh, fruit. So I'm going with some dried fruit, which I've hydrated in just some hot water. Um, I've got cranberries and I've got some apricots. Um, so I don't know, I think a little bit of both here would be appropriate. Um, I'm actually also going to use the liquid whenever we're soaking uh, dried fruit or um, maybe in savory recipes, uh, dried mushrooms. It's nice to save that water because it's really, really flavor. The strength of the flavor is really good and it's going to add well to our recipe. So I'm going to go with a little bit of apricot, a little bit of cranberry. I'm going to pour my water in here. All right, so basically we have our mustard seeds, we have our, our uh, fruit water, we have our fruit. And here's kind of some fun, the fun part, um, maybe not for our youngest uh, UCSD Craft Center attendee ever, but uh, I have a little bit of um, just like a sweet red wine. Um, and so I'm going to add um, about a quarter, just a quarter cup in there. Uh, that'll add some acidity uh, to our recipe. It'll add a little sweetness and we're going to boil um, our, our, excuse me, our mixture down. So we won't have to worry about um, the alcohol content at the end. And so talking about balance of flavor here, we have sweet from the fruits. We have a little acidity from the wine, um, something nice to add a little bit of savory and also to add a little kind of bitter, if you will. Um, I just have some chopped red onion here. Um, I'm, I, this is a half, but I'll probably go with um, just a couple tablespoons. And at the end of the day, I will say this, I see there's some requests for ingredient lists, which I will definitely fulfill um, probably via email after uh, the class. When we're making mustard and when we're making anything, I really want everybody to take away from this class that um, there are certain things, maybe say a birthday cake that definitely requires some uh, intuition and following a recipe. 
uh, to a T in order to get the perfect birthday cake. Um, mustard is something where let's say we don't like the flavor of our mustard, um, you know, as after we're boiling it, we can certainly adjust that with um, and adjust our seasoning. So um, yeah, so bear with me for now, but we will get you, you know, a general list of what we're doing today. So don't feel, you know, like you're in like you're in college, even though this is a college-based class, but that you have to scribble away. Um, Anika mentioned earlier that um, I'm a big fan of seasonality and a big fan of really highlighting what's available and um, in our uh, in our terroir at this time. Um, so I wanted to introduce kind of an interesting um, ingredient, maybe something you've seen, maybe something you haven't. Um, just like mustard uh, in the wild, as I was saying earlier, that can grow rampantly. Um, this is also one of them. Any uh, any guesses? Guesses? Yeah. Guesses? Guesses? Five, four, like three. Mint or I know, I know, mint? I know. Oh, we it's have an nettle. I know. It, mint was a good guess. It is it's not. Nettle. It's nettle. It's stinging nettle. It is stinging nettle, exactly. So stinging nettle is kind of in its peak season right now. It is, um, it is as described, it stings when you touch it. Um, so, uh, you know, picker beware. Um, I have this in my garden right now and um, it's in its juvenile stage. So it hasn't gotten real, real sticky yet. And yes, I see in the chat, Annika said, it makes a wonderful tea. That is very true and it's super nutritious. Um, the vitamin content and the, you know, your, what the chlorophyll you're able to draw is really, really good for your health. So if you brew it, even just brew fresh leaves or even kind of like juice them um, only at their juvenile stage. So, oh, soup too, man, we got some good foodies on here. So with, with nettle, once it gets to the stinging point, which I mean, I hate to say it, the only way you would really know is like if you touched it. Um, this is to obviously I can rub my fingers on it. We're still in a good place. So I can use this like any soft herb, like a parsley or a basil. Later in the season, you're, you know, absolutely able to use stinging nettle, but you're going to need to um, blanch it first um, to get rid of the stinging properties. So you're not as able to use it um, in its raw form because you wouldn't want to ingested and have it down your, uh, you know, scratching your throat. So um, we have some nettle leaves here and I'm just gonna chop those up. And as I'm talking about chopping, uh, I wanna talk about uh, my stance on knives. Um, I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I, I cook professionally. I've cooked in a lot of different capacities. And I still use this like $10, $15. It's a Kunra Khan, like obviously there's polka dots on it. Like it is definitely not a knife you would normally see in a professional kitchen, but it's what I use at home and it is fabulous. Um, it has, uh, I will say this, it's got used, but I've kept the edge uh, sharp and maybe this is something in a future uh, craft center class we address, but uh, how to sharpen your knives. But um, I am I am not opposed to a cheap knife as long as it's getting the job done for you. I feel like um, there's really no sense in you know getting out there and buying a super expensive knife. So I say that, but I also have a more expensive knife, and this is a Mac. This is a Japanese knife. Um, this is from the I, I think the 60s or 70s, I got this at a farmer's market from a knife vendor there. But um, I really enjoy uh, Japanese blades because they're light and they're really easy um, to keep an edge on. So you can constantly hone your knife, which is um, you know sliding it against a steel to keep it sharp. Um, some people may have a Wistoff or a Messermeister. Um, those are also, those are a little And now I'm going to start telling jokes <laughs> until she's unfrozen. What did, uh, why is the tomato red? Does anyone know why the tomato's red? Because it saw the salad dressing. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, I, I have a very short repertoire of, oh, and she's back. And she's back. I can be quiet. One. 
So we left off on, you know what, use what knife works for you. And today for us, for our purposes, that's going to be the polka dot knife. So I have our mixture here and I'm gonna push this back so you can see. So when, um, when I'm chopping herbs, I like to use what's called the chiffonade method. I'm sure people are familiar with that because they do a lot of chiffonade basil. If you stack the leaves on top of each other to be a pile, and then I'm gonna kind of roll it up roll it up into a little like a jelly roll. I'm gonna keep my, um, my fingers in and I have like a platform I can even rub, you know, put the knife against to guide myself. I'm gonna rock. Um, I'm using the middle part of my knife because it's gonna kind of give me an equal balance of sharpness and power. Um, if you are, if you're cooking or excuse me, if you're cutting something heavier uh, something a little like a carrot or something, you kind of want to use the back part of your knife more because that's closer to your hand. So it's going to give you power. Herbs, I can easily get through. So I'm going to use the kind of middle to the top part of my knife to cut through. So I'm cutting through. And again, I'm just cutting the herbs into small pieces so that when we're putting together our rustic mostarda here, it's, uh, you know, we're not going to get large pieces of metal. So we have our fresh herbs in there. All right. So as you can see, we have, oops, let's see if we can get the right angle here. Okay. So we have a little bit of liquid. We have our fruit. We have our mustard seed. Um, we want to make sure all of our solids are covered in enough liquid. So I'm just going to add a little bit of additional water here. And while we talk about our next mustard, I'm going to put this on the heat and we are going to cook it down. We're gonna do like a medium heat just to get it going and we'll bring it down to a simmer. All right, has anyone ever had mostarda before? Oh, thank you, thank you, whoever wrote that, yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, mostarda, um, given the flavor profiles we just talked about. Um, I have a nice setup that we'll show you guys in a second um, to, that our mostarda will go with. Um, you know, again, we have fruit that's sweet. We have uh, tart wine. We have a little bit of bitter from the herbs. Um, so you can maybe uh, start visualizing uh, what we need there. So something in the salty realm, maybe the salty, slightly bitter realm. Uh, mostly salty that would fit our, um, fit the use of our mustarda. So uh, you can brainstorm something that would go well with that while we talk about our next uh, item. So um, when we get mustard, say just mustard, mustard, ketchup and mustard, uh, yellow mustard, that's what's called an emulsified product um, or an emulsification, which Honestly, it's a really simple way to just say water and oil came together. Um, so most of us are familiar with, uh, say we're dressing a salad of some sort and you know, you get the oil and vinegar, right? It's two separate components that always separate. They'll never, they'll never come together because they just, they just don't get along and that's okay. Um, and they don't get along, but mustard is a really, really cool ingredient because um, it is, it is what's called, or what I like to call informally, it's the, uh, it's the marriage counselor that can keep everybody together. Um, inherently being the marriage counselor that can possibly keep oil and vinegar together, uh, on its own, it stays together um, in, a, um, in a state that will not separate the way oil and vinegar do. Um, I guess we can draw on a little bit of my uh, uh, food science background. So having um, hydro, or excuse me, having uh, properties that are uh, hydrophilic, so water liking. Um, so that's gonna obviously get our, in our oil and vinegar mixture, that will hold the hand, the hydrophilic side of the mustard will hold the water um, component, which is the vinegar. And then um, the hydrophobic side, which is the oil, it also, mustard also has the ability to hold the hand of the oil. And so it's holding these two, you know, forces together and saying, be together, I'm your marriage counselor. So um, that is what a, that's basically what holds together a lot of salad dressings, even in a, um, even in a, a salad dressing that you see at the store, um, 
there's going to be you typically if it's smooth and it's not a se you know separating there's um typically a mustard seed or a mustard extract something that's going to keep the two together and keep it stable in one uh, mixture so um, i have some soaked mustard seeds here um and uh so when you're making uh say just a whole grain mustard here um the step will always be to start with um, soaking your dried, your dried mustard seeds. Um, you can do it in water. So I have it in water here for, we're just about to make a smooth emulsified mustard. However, um, if you are keen on just having those crunchy bits of um, you know, mustard seed and whole grain mustard, what you do is instead of just, um, uh, just soaking in water, you're going to uh, make kind of like a, a delicious bath, a, a more delicious soap than just water. And then that'll get you to whole grain mustard. So for example, um, if, uh, if I was to just be making a whole grain mustard, what I would do is I would take my, I'd probably take the whole bottle. That's what this is here. So two ounces of the mustard seed, um, I would put it, I would soak it in about um, a half a cup of apple cider vinegar or vinegar, and then a half a cup of, um, water and then so I have a little bit of sour going on and then what I would do is I would um, add in my dried herbs or fresh herbs of choice to infuse into the mustard chopped up small and then uh, you can balance out the uh, sour from the vinegar the bitterness from the herbs with a little bit of sweet so um, that's where maybe you can add in like a honey or a brown sugar um, essentially whole grain mustard is a quick pickle of seeds so again, I'll show you the finished product. As you can see, there's no breakdown here. It's really just um, the seeds have soaked in the liquid and then they've kind of formed, you know, this gelatinous layer, but really there's no, it, it's, a, it's a pickling of the seeds is what it comes down to. So um, uh, following that kind of loose recipe there, you can go a lot of different ways uh, with your soak. Uh, uh, we are San Diegans, so craft beer is always a really good option. So craft beer could be substituted for that half cup water measurement I gave you. Um, really nice like uh, pale ale or, you know, if you're a hoppy person, an IPA in there would be great too. Um, you can also take it is there any oil in the whole grain mustard? So in the whole grain mustard, it's, um, you don't add oil because it's really just, uh, I mean, it depends on what you want to get out of it. So an, an oil will probably dull out the flavor of the mustard seed and kind of your other components. Um, as I said before, it is the peacemaker. So it will stir in, it will just kind of mellow out any of the flavors that you have. So maybe if you're wanting to make that more mellow mustard, adding a little bit of neutral oil, say like a, a grapeseed oil, or um, I really like sunflower oil, that, that'll kind of mellow out the flavor. So when you're using your mustard, you don't get that immediate hit of uh, mustard spice, if you will. Uh, and that's if you add a little bit of oil. I probably wouldn't add to our mixture uh, in the ratio I gave you. I wouldn't add more than maybe two to three tablespoons, uh, just because you don't want to have a mouthful of oil as you're using your condiment. Um, so, so that is whole grain mustard. And so we have our, we're gonna go into smooth mustard here. So again, I have my water soaked mustard seeds. Uh, this guy has been in the side ground. This is uh, an immersion blender. Uh, I find it really helpful because it turns any vessel really into a blender cup. Um, I really enjoy these and these are great for like making soups in the pot and you know, one less dish is, you know, I'm all right with that. Um, so we're gonna use the immersion blender today. Um, thing about the immersion blender is uh, as, as in the title, the contents of what you are blending need to be immersed. Uh, disasters in my time uh, immersion because someone's you know using it and you can see the color if I would just use this dry it's really just spinning things it would really be spinning things under because the blade is actually up higher so I would need to make sure that I have enough contents to get up into the blade for it to immerse well but seeing is believing so we'll we'll, we'll blend it up here 
I see, I'm trying to, I can see like the preview of the chat on my video. So anything along the way, Anika, that I'm missing or that I'm not addressing? I got one request that um, uh, that we follow up with um, the, the the direct measurements because they're absolutely yeah yeah so we'll just we'll I'll make sure we get that from you and then we can email it to everybody absolutely that sounds good perfect so great so I'm going to empty our contents of our soaked uh, mustard seeds into here. Um, I'm glad we asked about uh, oil. So, in a smooth in a smooth mustard, um, in order not, it's not only water; it's the oil that's going to help us kind of really create that creamy texture. The fat um, of the oil surrounds the uh, fat loving portion of the mustard, and so we're going to get um, hopefully get a pretty smooth uh, what we call emulsion here. Uh, key. I guess key step in making an emulsion or making a salad dressing that stays together is um, we can't throw everyone together like at the high school dance. Just throw everybody in the gym and you know hope everybody hope everything works out. Uh, it's definitely a slow process. So wh whenever you're adding oil into um, an emulsion, this is going to be mustard, or if you're doing it with dressing, we want to make sure it's a very gradual process. Now. I have this immersion blender. Um, are there other options to, um, besides the immersion blender to blend mustard? Yes, um, you can use a, a food processor. I'd recommend using a smaller one. Um, the bowl on a big food processor would probably um, create uh, too much, sur the, the surface area would flatten out all the ingredients and it maybe wouldn't chop everything all the way uh, smooth the way you want it. Um, if you want to go old school, if anybody has any ideas about going old school, I would probably use if we really wanted to get down with it, uh, a mortar and pestle. But, you know, I don't I don't know. I mean, I have time during COVID, but I don't think I have that much time. But, you know, feel free. Um, those 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 people with kids, that's a, that's always a good thing. Uh, you know, getting getting some of the frustration and the action and energy out it uh, with a mortar and pestle is always good. Um, but back to what I was saying make sure you add your oil slowly. So um, I will, you can all, you can all judge me and hopefully this comes together as I'm saying, uh, and then uh, you can follow my add the oil slowly tip. So got that in there. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Uh, I use a pink Himalayan salt. So I'm going to add a couple of pinches in here uh, just to counterbalance some of the bitter that we have from our uh, mustard seeds. Um, and then I have that, I have that. Again, I have a grapeseed oil here. So that's gonna be our neutral oil. And we are gonna go for it. Hoping it's not too loud. Oh, another blender tip. And this is like a super nightmare of mine. Uh, you know, and you know they're in a rush at their 11th hour and then they like don't or the blender is on you know level 20 when they turn it on so it explodes so I'm always a a stickler about making sure that the blender is on its lowest setting to start so we'll start there I'm gonna press again everyone can see the blade is under uh excuse me the head of the immersion blender is in the liquid. So fire away. So I can lift it a little bit to make sure that I'm kind of blending up things. I'm moving the stick blender around. You can kind of see it's starting to homogenize a little bit. And we're breaking some of the seeds down. I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil aioli by hand, uh, which is, you know, an egg yolk, a garlic, or a garlic clove, and, and drop after drop after drop of olive oil. Uh, this is as painstaking, but again, I'm going to add very slow, little, little drips at a time. As you can kind of see, it's starting to homogenize a little bit. Um, at this point, maybe you like a little bit of chunky seed in yours. Maybe you don't want to go as extreme as the whole grain, uh, you know, the pickled mustard seeds we talked about, but maybe you like a little bit of that fibrous edge. You can stop right here and you can season. Uh, I'm going to keep going and I'm actually going to turn up the blender a little bit so I can kind of show off and maybe we can get that real smooth texture. So. Mm -hmm. 
So as I'm adding oil, um, oil once it's um, mixed in with the mustard is actually going to really thicken. Um, we're breaking down the seeds and we're breaking out um, some of the proteins that cause thickening and we're aerating the oil in the, um, we're aerating the oil and the fat molecules in there. So we end up getting, as you can all see here, you know, we started with soaked loose mustard seeds and now we're looking at, you know, I can lift it and you can see like a paste kind of forming. So I don't want to keep you with uh, as much blending. So I'm just going to blend for a little bit more. All right. So and what's great is you don't have the whole apparatus. You just have this little all right so um we have here i can show you the texture of it i still have a little bit i probably could have gone you know even more anyone uh, anyone out there have a vitamix if you did this in a vitamix you would pulverize this in two seconds and it would be super smooth but let's see here so I have, I mean, a pretty good looking, you know, paste, something that I could definitely spread on a sandwich, something I could use for a charcuterie board. Um, so what I'm going to do is, this sounds crazy, but I have my tasting spoon. You definitely want to like taste uh, how spicy because all, again, all mustard seeds are not created equal. So we want to taste where we're at. I think the salt level is really good. Um, I would probably, um, uh, it's a little spicy for me. So um, something, you know, any, uh, anyone out there, what, what, what could I add to kind of quell some of the spice going on? Anyone out there? Anyone out there? Something sweet. You got it. So I am so lucky because my fiance decided to become an amateur beekeeper. So this is his honey that we harvested um, from our yard. So blessed so blessed. So that is an excellent choice. Good call. And again, I mean, as you can see, we have, we're going to have honey mustard and that's, you know, that's something pretty common. And I think um, what's fascinating is you saw how, what we did. We had water soaked mustard seeds. We had salt, we had oil and we're adding honey and that is it. So I, I you know, really, I think there's a couple of things that can come from that. You know, when you're going to the store and you see honey mustard and you look on the back of the label, um, I think there's, you know, it's it's easy to say like maybe maybe I should just make that myself because there really doesn't need to be 12 million ingredients inside honey mustard. Now that you know, you know where it comes from. So we're gonna add a little bit of honey in here. Uh, this would be a good point to add uh, herbs, uh, maybe a fresh herb of some sort um, would be great. Maybe like a tarragon in here, I think would be really awesome. I'm going to use a clean spoon and we can just stir that in. Um, a note on mustard. So um, it is, it is, uh, it keeps really, really well. Um, so once we're done here, um, I've made mustards and kept mustards in the refrigerator for probably like three to four months. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, we're only making little amounts at a time. Um, so we're not having to consume a lot of mustard. I'm a, I'm a mustard fan. Um, my beekeeper fiance um, has, a, has a firm uh, dislike from uh, mustard. So it's just me eating mustard in the household. But love it, love it. And so I'm a fan, um, again, of tasting along the way, you know, what we're, um, what we're creating in order to really customize what's going on. Uh, right off the bat, when you taste your mustard, it's probably going to hit you in the back of the throat. Um, so that's because we've just exposed um, the capsaicin or the spice uh, components in the seed of the mustard. So by blending the uh, seeds, as you are, uh, as it ages out, especially in the fridge and the oil component, the salt, um, the honey, are starting to interact with uh, the mustard seed components, you'll find that it mellows out. So um, there is always that. Uh, so fresh mustard, right after you make it is always gonna be its most pungent. So I'm just gonna rinse my hands real quick. Any questions along the way? How are we doing? Let's make sure I didn't, I'm not gonna burn down my house with this mustarda. 
<laughs> that would not be good. No burning I down houses. Question. Sure. Uh, so I haven't used my apple cider vinegar for a long time, and it, now it has these strange little things floating in it. Does that mean it's spoiled? All right. So, um, well, I, I'd ha I definitely have to look at it. Um, you know, if you I was to be a see bedding at the curve. bottom, it's kind of got some almost like moss or. <laughs> oh, okay. Totally. Growing in it. Let me see if mine looks like that. Oh, well, mine is a little fresher, but. Uh, I guess you can kind of, you might be able to see it. There's like that ring of stuff, uh -huh. but I'm sure maybe yours is a little more pronounced. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Because uh -huh. <laughs> I haven't used it for maybe two years. <laughs> yeah. Well, for, first things first. So um, if, uh, if anybody, is anybody a kombucha uh, maker out there? Um, essentially all the sediment that you're seeing on the bottom of, a, of an actual well-made vinegar is kind of like bits and pieces of SCOBY or bits and pieces of fiber. For example, an apple cider vinegar, it would be, you know, um, kind of the pulp components or, or, you know, things like that, that were kind of unfiltered, that were left unfiltered along the way. So um, they're not bad for you. So the, t the way you can tell vinegar is bad, when vinegar starts to um, smell, give you that kind of acetone um, smell, that's when you know it's bad. So that's when the um, the acetic um, the acetic acid has converted into I'm not sure what the com the chemical component is, but basically that off smell of um, like nail polish remover. So that's when you know it's bad. Um, the sediment, um, as long as you're not you know, I definitely wouldn't recommend using that apple cider vinegar that you just described to do like an oil and vinegar dressing where the particles are like visible, but if you used it and you like blended it up into a mustard or a salad dressing the way we did, you would break down those, um, you know, those fibrous components or those um, unfiltered components and they won't hurt you. Good question. I just used my, I just used my tea strainer and uh, so Perfect. I filtered out the uh, solid bits of it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cool. So let me uh, put this in a bowl here that's going to be easier to see. So we actually, I probably should have, we can even chop up the fruit a little bit, but I'll just, uh, I'll show you guys here what we have. I was watching a show the other day and it was these two chefs and, you know, one chef was like, hey, did I cut this enough or did I, does this look more refined enough? And he's like, no, but we'll just call it rustic and then we'll, we'll move on. So, you know. That's what you can tell your 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 guests as you're cooking along if something is a little out of place, but um, you know, a little bigger than normal. You could say I was going for the rustic artisan look, you know. But uh, so essentially, we've cooked down those uh, mustard seeds that we started with, with the uh, onions, the nettle, the dried fruit, a little bit of the wine. Um, oh, you know what? With my clean spoon here. Um, I always think a bit of salt is really something that kind of makes things sing. Um, I hope everyone agrees here, um, uh, especially that pink Himalayan salt. I really, really like the way, this sounds so counterintuitive, but it's uh, salty without being overly salty, which I love. Um, um, but, um, and that's probably because it's, you know, a mineral salt. Oh, you know, I talked about things being rustic earlier, but because we cooked the apricot down, we can kind of smash it up a little bit and, you know, as we're serving. So um, that's kind of a, an indicator, you know, if we can smash our fruit. We know it's soft and it's going to be good for us to eat here. But um, so mustard again, super rustic, right? Comparatively to our blended mustard, we both, we, you know, both bring the mustard and the spicy flavor. Both are gonna be a really great counterbalance to some savory dishes. Um, speaking of which, anyone out there, anyone have some ideas where this uh, mostarda or our blended mustard is gonna be served or how I'm gonna serve it? Any suggestions? All right. It sounds like that mustarda would be good with a meat dish. Yes, I agree, yes. Oh, yay. Yes. Oh, I, I saw with meat. Um, I am, uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, I'm a big fan in general of fruit with savory dishes, but um, fruit with meat and someone said chutney. Yes, exactly that way. So um, with stone fruit, apricots and berries, I really like um, 
uh, like like a lamb or a duck, if anyone is uh, keen to those. Um, even pork, pork takes porks kind of all across the board can take in a lot of sweet, savory, salty, any of the above, any, any of the above really. Uh, and then I saw the magical answer that I have today from Anika, which is a cheese board, a cheese board. So on my cheese board today is um, really, really good. If anybody shops the uh, local farmer's market circuit uh, in San Diego, uh, this brand is called Spring Hill Cheese. Um, my uh, fiance and I used to help the owner uh, sell at the farmer's market. So we're very versed in how much we love this cheese. Yeah, Spring Hill Cheese. This one, it's a two year aged cheddar. So it's going to definitely have some savory to it. It's also going to have a little bit of tang from uh, the aging process. Um, but I think it's going to be lovely with our fruit here. And, you know, yes, yes, the flavors will go together. But I got to say, and hopefully I can get the right angle on this to show you all. I mean, you know, visually, we eat with our eyes. You know, we eat with our eyes. So we have you know, we have our white cheese that's kind of a counterbalance on both sides to our orange um, in, the, uh, in the mustarda and our oranges here. Um, and, you know, a little bit of nuts on the side for texture. So I really think, um, you know, again, we want to address in, um, when we're cooking to kind of how can we how can we make the fireworks happen? Like I described in the beginning of the class, how are we, you know, able to really amplify something, um, you know, by just thinking about, you know, what's going to happen on our palate. So I urge everyone to just, um, as you're cooking, number one, taste as you go. You know, that's the only way you're going to know if something is really hitting all the marks that you want it to. And, and you know, secondly, I mean, a recipe is a recipe, but I think um, the biggest thing that I've learned as a chef, as a cook, as someone just who likes to eat food is, you know, whether it's step one, you're adding seasoning when they ask you to, or step 10, you know, you forgot step one and you're adding it at step 10. I mean, truly you're still seasoning the product and you're going to get something that's better than something without seasoning. So, um, it's really about learning, you know, how to season and also that it's okay to, to, you know, uh, jump off the directions and jump off the recipe for a second, as long as you're making something that you're going to like to eat and you're going to want to serve to your guests. So, all right. Any questions? Wish we could eat this cheese board together. It looks lovely. You always make me so hungry. I start drooling. <laughs> Christina, and I'm so sorry. I have to hop off. I have to go uh, jump into another Zoom um, for lavender pin cushion sewing. Fun. Um, so I'm sorry I have to leave, but um, you're in good hands with Adam, and um, and I'm just I'm just so thrilled to to actually have this happen. How many conversations did we have for so long about well, what can we do and how can we do it and how are we going to do it in a pandemic and how are we going to share the joy of Christina with everyone? And we did it. We did it. We, we did, did it. it. So, we did it. We did it. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, thank you, Annika. Uh, yeah, great. Thanks, Helen. And um, nice to see all of you. Nice to see you, Faith, um, and everybody. And um, and stay, uh, keep your finger on the pulse of all things Craft Center because we're back and we're 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 virtual for now, but we got lots of lots of ideas coming. So see you later. Bye. Ooh, where, Ooh, where can we get that cheese? Yeah. So the cheese itself, um, I'm pretty sure. So again, the, the name of the farm is Spring Hill Cheese. They're what's called a, a farmstead operation. So everything from milking the cow, processing that milk all the way to cheese making and cheese packaging and shipping happens up in uh, on site at one site on the farm in Petaluma. Um, so again, Spring Hill Cheese. Um, they are, so let's see, the farmer's market today is Friday. So tomorrow it would be at Little Italy, uh, farmer's market, Hillcrest on Sundays. Um, let's see, what are the other ones? Coronado on Tuesdays. Uh, Lucadia, if anyone's in North County on Sundays as well. Um, but all the major farmer's markets. And um, again, maybe this is my, my just my love of the cheese because my fiance and I got to sell it, but uh, the cheese itself, all the milk used to make the cheese is uh, um, 
The milk comes from a very specific type of cow called a Jersey cow. And the Jersey cow is from not the Isle of Jersey. Is it the Isle of Jersey? But in England, uh, you know, on that side there, they're uh, a really beautiful brown cow. And this sounds ridiculous, but they have the most beautiful eyelashes. But in addition to having the most beautiful eyelashes, the cream content and the fat content in their milk is higher than that of a Holstein cow, uh, the black and white cow we all get our, our, our milk from. So it really lends this really awesome texture to the cheese and it's a unique um, you know, feature about the product. Uh, it's all organic, all the cows are you know, uh, pasture raised on, on grass. So you kind of get the best of both worlds and it all comes in the form of cheese. So who doesn't like cheese? Um, one of my favorites. Uh, any other questions? Um, I saw Helen, how long do you soak the mustard seeds for? So um, you can soak, the longer you soak the mustard seed, the more mild flavor it is. So I've, I've done before where um, I've, I've got my liquid, um, you know, whether it be just the water or the flavored liquid we talk about, maybe a combination of water, beer, water, wine, uh, water, vinegar. Um, I've, I've, I've soaked mustard seeds for as little as say two to three hours, but I made sure to heat my liquid because that really helped with the absorption process. So two to three hours, or if you start cold, you can soak, soak your mustard seed, put wrap or put something in the fridge um, uh, overnight. And so uh, that longer period though, you'll really get that really, uh, you'll see that really viscous texture because um, the mustard seed will have absorbed more liquid over a longer period of time. Uh, raw, so raw mustard seeds, I saw a question, can be purchased at, you know, I got these at a spice aisle um, at Albertsons, which is close to my house. Another really good resource um, I recommend is Specialty Produce. They're a, a retail and wholesale um, grocery operation uh, down by the airport. Uh, the name is Specialty Produce. So they have all kinds of fun things. And I assume that because everybody on here loves to eat, I assume that you're really gonna love this place. Uh, they have a lot of things going on. Oh, awesome, thank you for putting that up. So uh, I, I think um, this is a really good baseline and um, I just wanna kind of leave everyone with, you know, um, how we started the class. When we're paring down things and now that we have time to kind of explore, you know, uh, these different cooking avenues, these different ingredient avenues, sometimes things are simpler than, you know, what we expect. Um, you know, prior, when I first learned how to make mustard, I couldn't believe that was it. You know, you see mustard seeds, you see mustard on the shelf, but I mean, who knew that the connection could be so easy as just, you know, soaking them and blending them or soaking them and cooking them down with fruit. Um, so I think there are a lot of different projects that I definitely want to uh, look into um, as we're developing culinary arts programming for the craft center. Um, I'm sure, um, you know, Annika, along with myself, uh, are open to a lot of suggestions because, um, you know, the sky's the limit and we eat at least three times a day. So uh, let's let's learn how to eat better. So thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time.